So, Gene, it's great to be on the set with you, but it seems like old times, Howie. Yeah, but it's not the mayor's report. We're not here no. to talk about the municipal channel. We're here to talk about the public channel, public access channel in the Somerville Media Center. Great days. Yeah, great Good days. Memories. But it's amazing uh, the evolution of what's happened here in Union Square and throughout Somerville and uh, how this facility is used when we look back on the history. Uh, which really, when we talk about the early history in the 70s when uh, Warner Cable first came in, I know you were on the board of aldermen, and right. uh, I don't know, it was a little bit of a problem area. It was kind of a nightmare. It seemed like we spent most of our time talking about poor cable in Somerville. They're not holding up to their contract. They, they, they constantly lose their, we lose their service. One time during the Super Bowl, uh, not enough programs that they promised us, on and on and on. And if it wasn't one alderman from Ward 2, it was another alderman from Ward 7. Well, speaking about the, let me interrupt with the Ward alderman from Ward 2, which I believe was Frank Bakey. Frank Bakey. We had one pay channel then called the Star Channel, which always ran James Bond movies. And I think at the alderman's meetings, he always recited the lines from that James Bond movie. Exactly. So. He said it was only $5 extra yeah. a month, but you never got the, any movies. You got just the same movies over and over again. You know, so that was one of the things that we got started in 1972 and on, continued on, until the 80s when I became mayor. Right. And I promised the people that I would do something about cable. Right. Uh, just so happened that we knew the Warner Cable, which was a 10-year contract, was going to be up in 82. So we started work immediately on what can we do to negotiate a contract that is going to be good uh, for the people of the city. Right. And we right. ended up doing so only because I hired you. Well, I, I, I think that uh, there was more than me involved. We had a great cable advisory board, uh, and uh, we had some other citizens involved, but we, we tackled not only the consumer issues because you couldn't get through on the phone and you couldn't understand your bill. Exactly. Uh, and you had, as you mentioned, the technical issues. But the other thing we looked at was that uh, in the 70s, public access was run by the cable company. Right. Uh, Warner had its facility on Day Street next to the post office. And there were some incidents there where they didn't like the programming and they wanted to stop the programming. We had the resignation of a director over some of the policy issues. And, and we said, hey, we have an opportunity uh, to do something special, to give a uh, voice to people in Somerville by creating sure. a channel, which was provided for, for uh, by the FCC, had put the new regulations in and said, if you have a modern cable system, you need to provide some access channels. And the public access channel was considered a first come, first serve, almost right. like a soapbox. That's right. And I went to you and I said, Gene, why don't we take, I well, probably didn't call you Gene then, I think I called you Mayor, because <laughs> we were, uh, but I, I think we said, why don't we look at the possibility of putting the, the operations of public access in the hands of the community by creating a nonprofit corporation. That's right. And taking that function away from the cable company. Exactly. And you said, that sounds great. And I think I said to you, and I'd like to see the board in a way that it's not controlled by City Hall. Sure. So that it was really, uh, you don't want to have a chilling effect on what people can say. And I said, that sounds good. And you said yes. Because and City Hall sometimes spoils things. Exactly. And, and, and I'm sure there are times, and I know, I know of some incidents where there were attempts to stop programs from going on this channel, and you might have had to say, I don't control that. I don't control that. I did a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and so... Uh, I did, but you had a, you just can't, you can't control some and control and not control others. Right. Uh, so as long as it, it was good for the public in some respect, uh, it was okay with me. Right, and, and so that's how, uh, the, uh, at the time, Somerville Community Access got created, Somerville Community Access Television. It was the first nonprofit corporation uh, created in Massachusetts to, to get into operation. Sure. And then you said, uh, well, where are we going to put this? Because we're no longer going to be part of Warner Cable. And what a lot of people don't know is that we were in this larger negotiation on the license renewal. And uh, we came up with a pretty good idea. It was kind of a bluff. Right. And uh, we, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, we, we made uh, the cable company think that we wanted to get an ownership stake. Exactly. Uh, we said, we, we are going to renew this license, but we want to own 25% of the system. 
and that made them go a little nuts. <laughs> Ballistic. <laughs> yeah. So um, what we what, what we did is we said, okay, if you don't want to do that, we have a fire station that we want okay. you to rent. It's probably worth about a hundred thousand, but we want you to rent it for a hundred and thirty thousand a year. A year, and we want ten years. And we want ten years. A million three. Yeah, a million three. And then I think the hidden thing here is that people don't realize that helped to fund the bond for the public safety it building. It helped. It helped. But you know, also Howie, uh, I asked you and Peter to go through the contract. And see if I'm missing anything, because when, at 72, I was only an alderman. We had no privy to look at the contract. Now I did as mayor, and we found that they were supposed to give us a mobile van, a truck loaded with equipment, so they could do all of the sports games and all, which they didn't do. Right, so we right. went ahead and we told them that we wanted something out of this, and we got $15,000 out right. of them, which I used to help negotiate the contract with, right. with, 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 to finally give you a salary. Right, yeah, exactly. So I know it was exciting. We, 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 uh, we created the nonprofit corporation. We identified the place uh, in Union Square, which was a central facility. We negotiated money for capital to get it uh, built. Uh, but we know that, look, we're, we're how many years later now? We're 35 years 35 later. 35 years later. And we need to make sure that this kind of facility keeps going. It's necessary. You know, all the programs that they do, well, and they have quite a few programs that, that I'm aware of and probably a lot more that I'm not aware of, but all of these here are good for the community. This is makes a part of the fabric of the community to have public access television. Absolutely. And we, you and I knew from the very beginning how important it was. That's right. And we want it to be good. Uh, we want it to, and we want it to stay good. Uh, and this is why we took this dilapidated building and made it what it is. Now, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it serviced us for 35 years. Right, and, and, but now is the time to uh, help this organization keep going because it, it, it not only provides uh, a, a voice for uh, getting on cable, but it's training youth, it's training other uh, people new to the city in terms of uh, learning how to use media. Of course. And that's, that, that's been a long tradition here because even before we had uh, the Access Channel, we had Somerville Media Action Project. There's, there's been a long history of uh, giving people the, the, the tools to express themselves uh, where they otherwise might not have it. Right. right. So, uh, of course, we have the Educational Channel, which we were the first on, and the Government Channel. But the Public Access Channel is really uh, the most special because it's open to everybody. Right. And you know, uh, people don't know this in Somerville, uh, or even elsewhere, but we were one of the first communities to have the mayor go on live television That's right. with the telephone on our desk and we accept phone calls from the people. And we never knew what phone calls were going to be good or bad, but we took them as we, as we got them right. and we answered the questions. And people may have called and asked me if I could plant the tree in front of their house yeah. or my trash wasn't picked up last week or whatever it is, but we looked into all those things. And we took notes, we had somebody in the studio taking notes, and we called them back, I called right. them back the next day personally yeah. to tell to give them the answer to their question. And they appreciated that. Yeah. And we didn't have the second, seven second delay, so we had to be careful no, about what was said. Exactly, um, but we were willing to do it and it paid off, and you know, because, yeah. and that's what people want, they want transparency. Yeah, and, but that's the same thing with the Somerville Media Center and Somerville Community Access Television is it, it, you know, there are call-in shows there as well, there are news programs, there are cultural shows, there are comedies. Um, it, it's really such a wide array. And what I'm impressed with is that um, how hard the volunteers work and the producers work. And, and when I speak about producers, I'm thinking about the producers group that's been around for, I don't want, no, I don't want to say 50 years, sure. but uh, I just have to call out Charlie Tesh because he was uh, involved right. so early on, uh, among others, of course. But um, so we have uh, traditions here, and, and then we're constantly evolving with new programs. Uh, and of course, the Somerville News is great, uh, Neighborhood News. Um, but, but the idea is, one, one of the things I've observed is the production values, which I call the quality of the programming, right. has really increased over the last 35 years. It used to be a very shaky camera. The <laughs> audio wasn't good. Rarely do you see that now uh, coming out of the access channels. And you know, my philosophy was, as mayor and even today, that when you have people who want to work together, and particularly the volunteers who give up their time and their effort and their money to try to do something that, that's good and right, uh, there's no way that a person such as myself as mayor should stop them in any way. 
Right. We should help them you know, every way we can. And that's the way it should be today. You look at the studio here and everything in it. Most of the people are volunteers. Very little paid staff. They can't afford paid right. staff. Right. But the directors and the volunteers and the, and the people who are on, on uh, uh, the board of directors, I mean, they're all unpaid staff, yeah. all yeah. wanting to do what is right for the city, and that's public access television. It, and that's why we should volunteer and give our money. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that there's not a truer... First Amendment forum, because you know you're really talking about a forum where, where uh, within the bounds of the law, but but it's very broad. You can't yell, say that that you know the city's on fire, that kind of thing. But you can talk about any issue. You can talk about any uh, idea. You can talk about any cultural thing, and and you're not you're not edited. You're not subject to censorship. Right. You're not under the editorial control of somebody else. So that that's really a fantastic thing to have in the city. Yeah. And before. 72, there were no access channels, it was just right. network. Then you had cable with access, and now social media, we, we have to recognize that it's a, a critical uh, piece of our communications complex, but people need training about right. how to use it, and that's part of what goes on at the media center. You know, responsible use, uh, and, and I think that's one, something that we want to support. And that's why I think that people watching this show and watching all the shows that are on, on on uh, uh, community access television, uh, should think about donating because yeah. I mean this is uh, this is not uh, pay, for, pay for by taxpayers. Uh, they get all their money only through uh, people like us who donate, as well as the fees that are paid by cable. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and it's a worthy cause. And I think we don't want it to go away. So let's not by donating. Thank you. <laughs> thanks everybody. Howie, thank you. Yeah, and, thanks. and thanks, and thanks. Uh, well, I want to say scat, but but yeah, we, but no, community to, act of television. Thanks for to putting on this show and all the other things you do. Yeah, and thanks to the Somerville Media Center for uh, it's a it's a great organization, and it is worthwhile to support. Thank you. Absolutely.